But they're not preaching the gospel. They're covering a song of a guy talking about Remember the day we smoked the bus together. And as a result of social media, people are getting platforms way earlier than they can handle it. Before they even hit their teens, they're already up on a stage getting people, you know, clapping for them. I really want to get into why we're so hard on Christian artists because this is really the elephant in the room in the church. It's the elephant in the room when it comes to a lot of Christian discourse. We live in a culture where we make idols out of humans. We do it out of our music artists. We do it out of actors, various types of celebrities. Nowadays, we do it off of billionaires, politicians. I can go on and on with that. And I think we are totally missing the mark as both a society and as a church and still allowing that to play such a huge fact, we make idols out of people because I think we all have this inward desire to worship. But if we're not careful, we'll worship man or we'll worship the, pro the productions of other humans. And so then we enter into the conversation of Maverick City, Dante Bo, Kirk Franklin, all of these different Christians. And what ends up happening, I think, with this is they're propped up way more than anyone you will see in the church. Creatives are, and generally music artists, your musicians, those that sing. Because we have such a huge platform for creatives in the church and we showcase them even before they've been discipled, I don't even think they have to know the gospel to become singers and stuff. We use that oftentimes because we understand that it's flashy. It's it's the prettiest part of church. It's your singers and especially in the black church, you know, the harmonies and just all of that. Music is such a big deal. I've heard so many people growing up that said, you know, they don't even want to go to the church if the music isn't good or they, they, they like the music. So that's why they go to a particular church. And some people even leave after the praise and worship. So churches will extend out the praise and worship in a service to where maybe otherwise it may have been 15 and 20 minutes. They'll make it 30, 40, if not an hour they'll make their worship. And so what ends up happening is the worship team, the praise teams, the choirs, they become the meat of the church. In fact, in a lot of churches and that we see out here, and I'm not co-signing these, but they a lot of the music and the concert type of elements of the church are the huge marketing points for churches. And we see that a lot, whether it's Bethel, Elevation, all of these different churches, these choirs and praise teams are the feature presentation in a sense. So we have to recognize that right off the jump. Okay, so why are we then so hard on them? The simple answer is because they're right there out in the front, but in a lot of cases, they're the least disciple. And I think that plays such a huge role in it. If the least discipled people have the biggest spotlight, then you're setting them up for failure. And there's a few verses I want to go to. Proverbs 20 and 21, an inheritance gained hastily in the beginning will not be blessed in the end. A lot of times we give creatives these positions in a church. We give people who are not ready something that they should not have, which is a whole lot of attention. And we're in the age of social media now. And as a result of social media, people are getting platforms way earlier than they can handle it, way earlier than their brains have even developed for them to be able to take, way earlier than their character has even gotten up to. And at early ages, a lot of times in, before they even hit their teens, they're already up on a stage getting people, you know, clapping for them and saying, all right, take your time now and all of that, right? <laughs> we get all of these different things and yet their character has not even caught up to that yet. And I don't think that we are as capable as we think of taking these things. Some people have started so young in the church that they don't even have faith yet. They just are so used to church and they heard about Jesus, all this stuff, but they haven't even quite placed their faith in Jesus, but they don't even know the difference because they've been in church their whole life. And I think that is key. So with like the Maverick City, Kirk Franklin at the Grammys and working with Quavo and stuff like that, or all the various things you can think about, those the reason why people are so hard on them is because of our view of these people. We understand that they have so much influence. If someone didn't have influence like that, we just laugh at them and, and shake them off. But when we feel like someone is influential, they're not evangelizing to the degree that we would expect them to with that platform, we immediately tense up. We're like, ah, but they're not preaching the gospel. They're covering a song of a guy talking about, you know, I used to smoke blunts with my, you know, his friend. Who under, We understand he died. That's a big deal. But people are going to look at that and say, you're not evangelizing by covering that song. 
how are you showing God by partaking in something that isn't glorifying God? I'm not saying it's glorifying the devil or glorifying even, I don't even know. But that's the response that people are going to have. Now, there's another verse that I think should be the model of the church that we need to take. And I'm going to get into that in just a second. But real quick, hit that thumbs up if you haven't liked this video. And we're going to check out this verse in just a moment. So the scripture I was talking about where it talks about is to be the greatest in the kingdom of God, you have to be the least. And we have to understand that's a result of serving. The person that is serving is the greatest, but that's the person that constantly puts themselves down. So yeah, if you see somebody at the Grammys with all these millionaires and great talents, some of the greatest talents to ever walk the face of the earth, sure, our first reaction as followers of Christ is, yeah, we're not going to necessarily have that level of cel celebration with it. It makes a lot of sense. It's already rigged for them to fail. We've already rigged the church and the system for them not to thrive because they're not set up to succeed in a lot of cases. And I don't know every individual in Maverick City. I definitely don't know Kirk Frank. I know a little bit of his backstory. I know he was in ministry young doing this and you know, God bless him and God has done a lot of great things. This isn't against him. I've defended Kirk Franklin, but I think the attention that these people have had over the course of their lives, if you're in the set case of Kirk Franklin, and now the, the attention that's, that Maverick City is getting, I don't think it's good when it's all said and done because we think more about them than we think about the God that they are exalting through their music. Some people idolize these people. And I think that's where we have to, we have to come and course correct to a place where, yes, we should, we should definitely have creatives. We should definitely create spaces for them, but we need to help them to be as evangelistic as possible. And that's where I'm coming from. So hopefully this was helpful. Leave a comment. Let me know what you all think. But before you head out, make sure you hit that thumbs up, like this video. And if you're not already subscribed, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell. Uh, Glock's loaded to the opponent's I'm a reach. Stop sewing to get a bonus, that's a reach. I was born to meet the moment, so yeah. why? Feast, no yeah. life, feast. You know yeah. why? Feast. Glock's loaded.